I well, I guess I'll tee myself up here. I had quarterbacks, um, and then we can follow up a little more going forward. So uh, I don't think we take a quarterback at eleven, but I do they'll really lose their mind if we do. That'll be that'll even be more minds getting blown than if we go for an offensive than a, line. Than a left tackle <laughs> at eleven. I will not be one of them. If we take a quarterback at eleven, it's because we're in love with the guy, and if you're in love yeah. with the quarterback, you take him. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you on that. Uh, but I think but that I, do, <laughs> I do think that it's perfectly within the reasoning that we were to trade back out of 11 and maybe take a quarterback late, late first, early second, if we were to accrue one of those picks as part of us moving back. Um, so if we were to move back from like 11 to, I don't know, Pittsburgh's one that has been linked to Malik Willis. You trade back 11, you move to 20, you pick up their 2022 20, second, and then a, a future third or something along those lines. Then you can maybe with that second round pick, you could jostle your way back up late in the first or early second. But the couple names I'm going to talk about, everybody's heard about Pickett. Um, the two that intrigued me the most, uh, the first one I'll talk about is Desmond Ritter. And there was actually a report today that most NFL teams have a him with a first round grade, which I wasn't surprised about. Uh, I, I thought he could have been a third rounder come, if he would have come out last year. And then all he did was throw for 3,334 yards, 30 touchdowns, eight interceptions with a QB rating of 158.7 and lead his team to their first ever college football playoff appearance. So you can only imagine his stock is rising at that point. Um, he's a big kid, uh, very big. And his exact measurables are, sorry, I had him on my stats page. His exact measurables, where did he go? I want to say 6'4", 225, 6'4", 230. Um, but he looks thin. If you watch him play, he looks narrow, which could be a little alarming, but similar to the guard. Maybe he's got a little bit room to – to fill out um watching him on tape the ball doesn't explode out of his hands in a way that some of the uh you know the josh josh allen ball does but the ball but 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 it's effortless um it's one of those kind of motions that he looks very little strain and you look up and the ball goes 55 in the air um so i've i've watched a lot of the film where he can hit the out route um he he can he can hit that deep in route that, you know, you got to get it between two crashing safeties over a linebacker. Um, outstretched arms, and you got to make sure that you can get it where it needs to be with enough zip, but also enough touch. Uh, there aren't very many quarterbacks in this draft that have that, which is why I think he's very intriguing. And he is sneaky, sneaky athletic. Um, if you've watched him, it's not sneaky, but people don't talk about him for his running ability. But he ran for over 2,000 yards last uh, in his college career. So full stats, he uh, with 810 attempt completions on 1,304 attempts. That's a 62% average. Um, where it gets interesting is he had a 60 – early in his freshman season, he, ran, he threw for 62. Then he dipped to 55 and 19. Then he jumped back up to 66 and 60, almost 65. So – so he's consistently over the last two seasons, which are obviously his most productive and his most recent in that 65 to 66 range, which is pretty good for a college quarterback. Um, and he's doing it this year against premium competition. They were ranked number four in the country. Uh, total stats, he's thrown for over 10,000 yards, 87 touchdowns to 28 interceptions. His career quarterback rating is 145.8. Um, so he passes the statistical test. Uh, his concerns, there's been time of inconsistent accuracy, uh, and he, he tends to miss high. Uh, he can get a little excited. Um, but I think some of that stuff's technique and coachable. His footwork can be wonky at times, and by wonky, it just looks like he gets a little happy feet, but they're at, over the course in the second half of his career in college. You could see him literally in that moment settle and then step, get his platform. So – I think some of that stuff's coachable. Uh, and if you were to fall into, I don't know, pick 36, 37, 38, you know, that first 
first four or five picks in the second round and we wanted to make a move up to get something like that, I think that would make sense. I think it's still a little early because, like they say, the most famous person in Washington, D.C. is the backup quarterback. So fans and media are going to be clamoring, and it could bother Wentz, but I don't think the locker room would be clamoring at that point. The other name I want to talk about uh, is another guy that's going to be second round or even later, and that's Carson Strong, where Ritter's ball was fluid and it did not explode off, but it had plenty of oomph. Carson Strong's ball explodes out of his hand. It, it, it's noticeable. When he pulls it back and lets go of it, it is going to get downfield and it's going to get there fast. He's another big guy. Uh, north of 6'4", I believe, and he's about 240, but he's a statue. Um, he is not athletic. In fact, he rushed for a whopping negative 305 yards in college, which means the only rushing yards he actually – Tallied were either sacks, sacks or failed quarterback sneaks. <laughs> uh, but passing, um, 853 attempts for 1,200 – or 853 completions at twelve, just over 1,250 attempts. That's a 68.1% average. Um, and that's over three seasons. His freshman year, he was 63%. And then his sophomore and junior year, he threw for 70%. 70% in each of those. Uh, 9,379 yards passing, 74 TDs, 19 interceptions. Similar to Ritter, he had 147.5 QB rating. Um, again, second round guy. I don't think he's going to go 11. He definitely is not worth 11, in my opinion. He's can be had later. He's a guy that you can kind of pick up, you can build on. It's a developmental guy. I think he's a little less pro ready than Ritter, but I think he's definitely got more of the pro ready arm i just wonder if about his athleticism and his ability to evade his biggest concern coming out of college was his knee he had a knee injury coming in but he went to the senior bowl and he did the entire senior bowl practices and games without a brace so a lot of um a lot of people are reading that as though that the knee is fine um that would have to be checked out the concerns are there from any previous knee injury especially on a quarterback and a quarterback that big uh he's not small and he can't really squirt around and avoid he could get rolled up on easily, uh, especially if he can't evade the pocket. But between the, you know, the five or six quarterbacks that are going to be going early, those two guys could be in the second round-ish place if Ritter doesn't climb enough. Uh, one last note on this quarterback class is it's very top-heavy. It's either first 45 picks or you're down into the mid to late third round, third day. There's not really a third round Kirk Cousins type. There's not a third round Russell Wilson type. And I'm not talking about NFL production. I'm just talking about graded out into those areas. Um, there's not a Davis Mills kind of thing. Uh, so if you miss on those guys, then the, the, I didn't dig too much into the second half of the draft on that because it's all those are all going to be flyer guys, and there's not really really much of an investment there beyond you know you take Tom Brady and hope you find Tom Brady. I thought I think that kid from Notre Dame could be a late guy. They might look at that. Uh, Count, I think his name is Jack Count. Count. Uh, Count. yeah. Hang on, I had him pulled up. Let me just sort this, if you guys. He's um big. He's got. He's uh very accurate. Um, he's not like an RPO kind of a quarterback any more of a traditional quarterback. But I just I just watched some tape on him. I thought he looked pretty good. So I don't know. You're right, though. It's like, you, at that point, you kind of are trying to find um, Russell Wilson, or <laughs> yeah, it's a later round, later round shot. You're not really um, you're not really going to find yourself. I don't think you're investing late with the hope that you can get somebody like that. You're talking about Jack Cohn. Yeah, yeah, and and he's athletic, um, six three two eighteen. And sorry, while I have the screen up, I'll go ahead and answer my own question. Measurables. Desmond Ritter is 6'3", 211. Sorry, I actually gave him too much weight. He is 211. He's thin, but he, he's got room to, to fill that out. And um, Carson Strong is 6'3", 226. More of that bigger body. Let's see. With only two picks in the top 100, it's hard for me to see us using precious draft capital this year on a quarterback if it's not going to be in the first or second round. Yeah, I think you're. So he, has, 
if no, they it's, if it's, somebody it's, just shockingly falls that they're in love with, it could happen. But short of that, I'm kind of with you. I, or kind of with Derek as well, that I would be very surprised to see him do that. I, I mean, guess got, yeah, our quarterback room is not is not desperate anymore, right? You've got Wentz, who we know can start in the NFL, and you've got Taylor Heineke, who we're, we're all pretty convinced can at least be a serviceable NFL quarterback. I wouldn't add a project when we only have, what, six picks overall? Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think my thought process is you have 11. If it's up to me, I'm looking wide receiver most likely in the top as one of my first or at least playmaker. There's a lot of wide receivers, I think, worthy of a first round pick. So if you could take that 11th pick, you know, and if Pittsburgh calls and they're desperate to try to get up, you know, ahead of pick your team in the mid teens that, that because they really want Willis, how, how hard can you leverage them? Uh, but Rivera hasn't shown a propensity to do that. So a lot of this is probably just wishful thinking, but you know, if I had it my way, we would trade back, add more assets. And then if you take a flyer second round pick on a quarterback, but you still have three more picks that you take in the first three rounds because of what you've accrued, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Is there anyone you did fall in love with? What do you think about Pickett or, or Willis? Either one of them float your boat? Um, I, Willis, everybody's heard about Willis, and all I can do is reiterate everything else that they've said. Like my... Um, it, it, the ball just explodes out of his hands. It's easily the most physically talented player in the draft, um, or the quarterback wise. But a lot of what he does is RPO stuff. It's college scheme. I mean, are we talking? I hate to say this, and I'm not, but, but are we talking RG three two point oh? The guy who's you know real fast can throw a deep, can throw the ball out of the out of the stadium. But the minute you try to ask him to be able to. Um, make a legitimate read or be a legitimate starting NFL quarterback? Does he have that progression in him? When, he certainly won't have it coming out of school. I mean, that's a two or three right. year project. Right. And, and I'm not, there's a giant red flag that not enough people are talking about. And I don't, I don't think, and I'm not saying that this is why he's not going to make it. I don't know, but he left Auburn to go to Liberty. And when he went to Liberty, statistically speaking, he was good, but at Liberty, his stats are still only in two full seasons starting. And I say only, but only in two full seasons starting in his, in his junior year at Liberty, he had a 64% completion percentage. So it was 170 completions over 265 attempts, 2,250 yards, averaging eight and a half. That's fine. But nine or 20 touchdowns and six interceptions. If this was Auburn, I would say that's pretty good. It's the SEC. But he's playing at Liberty. Like, I'm sorry, there's a level of concern there. And then in as a, in his junior season, his second, what they, they list them both as his junior, but his second junior season, he actually went down three points in his, in his uh, completion percentage to 61%. He still threw for 2,857 yards and 8.4 average, and it was 27 to 12. So it was a two to one ratio. Those last two guys I was talking about, um, Carson Strong doing it at Vada. He was playing against inferior competition. He threw 36 to eight. You know what I mean? Like almost four to one versus two to one against a, 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 a quote unquote lesser quality of opponent. And, and Desmond Ritter did it in, he was doing it in, they are the Americans, but he was doing it in, in his final season against, against the best competition you can be against. If you want to watch Desmond Ritter, watch the Cincinnati Notre Dame game from this past season. Notre Dame was touted. They had one of the best safeties in the NFL, supposedly coming out into the NFL, Kyle Hamilton. And I watched Ritter. I watched him look Hamilton off multiple times. I watched him make multiple, you know, he's progressing. It's an NFL style um, offense. Uh, but I will also say, you asked him that another one. I like Howell. Um, he's smaller. He is very athletic for his size kind of surprising he's not the most accurate uh jumps around from 61 to 68 to 62 percent but then again i watched a game where there were probably three or four drops and unfortunately the quarterback doesn't get the pass for that it's you know he still gets punished because it's an incompletion it's funny how that how that works i went out of my way to watch howell because I thought that might be a guy. I've been watching the quarterbacks, and the, I watched him play three games this last year, 
and I came away not liking him at all. I don't really? just something about the the body language, the the production just didn't. I just didn't see it on, in the kid. But I know he still looked like he's like a top five guy still with the quarterbacks. I said it before. I'll say it again. The only one I'm really excited about this year is Pickett. I may be loud wrong on him, but I think he's going to make someone a really good NFL quarterback. Well, he's going to make somebody in the top 10 a really good quarterback because there's no way with Willis or Pickett, both of those. One thing that's true every year, even in seasons where supposedly the quarterback class is weak, we see teams overdraft at quarterback. It happens every single year, no matter who the quarterback prospects are. And so I almost guarantee you Pickett and Willis are both gone before they're gone we, before uh, we get there. But if if, he's, if Pickett's sitting there at 11, John, and we don't, <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be bouncing off the walls. Yeah. 